will now call this meeting of the Jacksonville City Council to order. I want to welcome everyone who's come out for the meeting tonight that's in attendance and also those that are viewing the meeting on G10. I'd like to begin by having everyone stand uh, for the Pledge of Allegiance led by Mayor Pro Tem Mike Lazar, followed by the invocation by John Carter, the City Attorney. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our Heavenly Father, as we approach the end of another year, we're reminded of your generous and gracious blessings upon our city and upon us individually. You brought us through a hurricane season with no named storms. You gave our council guidance to steer us through a difficult budget process. And you continue to bless us every day, individually and corporately as the city of Jacksonville. And we give thanks. Thank you. Thank you. And tonight we give thanks for those who are serving our country around the world, our service men and women who are in harm's way and for their family. We pray your protection upon them. And as always, we give thanks and ask your guidance on our council, our mayor and council, that you would be with them during their deliberations this evening. All this we ask in your holy name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Council, at your places, uh, you should have a copy of tonight's agenda and the consent items. At this time, I'd entertain a motion to adopt. Second. Motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Next, to have approval of the minutes for November 19, 2013, special workshop meeting and a 2013 regular meeting. Motion to approve. So, so moved. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Next, we have uh, several presentations we're going to make tonight, and at this time, I'm going to come out front. This time, I would like to ask Pastor Chris Phillips from the River of Life Church here in Jacksonville. And so he's got several members of his congregation. If you wish to join us up front, please, by all means, do. I know you brought a crowd. You're blessed to have so many good followers, sir. This is my posse. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Anyone else who would like to join the church tonight, just feel free to come on up. And... Thank you so much, sir. <clears throat> well, on behalf of River of Life Church, we would like to present a gift to the city, a Christmas gift. We've done this for several years now, and we plan to continue. And uh, we hope that every year we can increase it. Uh, we started off a little bit smaller than this, but... Uh, this year we're presenting a check to the city for $10,000 and it's to help at-risk children with after-school programs. So we, uh, we really are giving this with a desire to see our city blessed in every way and we know that uh, you're doing everything you can uh, with the skills and abilities that God's given you to benefit our city and bless our community. And we know that uh, our church has a unique part to play in that and so we want to partner with you uh, to make sure that this city is the greatest city in North Carolina and one of the blessed places on earth. So we are really grateful for the city, for the police department, the fire department, for all the city services, and we're really thankful that we get to raise our kids here in such a blessed place as Jacksonville and Onslow County. Thank 
you. You're welcome. Wow. What a, what a gift. <laughs> yeah. Well, we thank you very much, all of you. You know, you're, you're, you're dedicated to your church and to your community. I love that. Uh, I love that in, this, in, in what you do here. Uh, this, this is something that you could have done. You could have made uh, changes or, or improvements with your church or whatever, but you've decided to extend this to the community. And I, I think that needs another round of applause. <laughs> Now I got something for you. If I can, right. <laughs> I'm going to give you the check, Mike. Don't try to cash it yet. <laughs> Reverend, Reverend Phillips, again, y'all are such great uh, citizens here. I mean, you've done a lot for this community. Uh, and all, all your efforts uh, as far as the donations you've made, and I, don't, I can't remember how many years, but it's been as long as I've been on, on council and as mayor. Uh, and all these are uh, all these gifts are, are given to help other people, it, you know, it, it, whether it be police or fire. But it, it's somehow uh, done uh, to help people that are in need, just like in this case here. We're going to use it for at-risk children. Um, I do want to present to you, to all of you, uh, at the River Life Church, a very small token of our appreciation for the donation that you've given us to assist in providing scholarships for needy children to participate in the city of Jacksonville Recreation and Parks Department programs. And this is, uh, I would like to present this to you this third day of December 2013. Thank you so much for what you do. Thank you. Thank you all. Bless you. Wow, that was kind of unexpected. And very appreciated. Next, I'd like to ask Chief Unero, uh, Captain Trish Driggers, Sergeant Philip Williams, and Officer Vanessa Smith, if you, if you would join me up front, and any other of your crew that you brought with you with the Special Olympics. Let's see, uh, we have Doc Colback, who's our senior manager, and Leslie Moyer, the director of development for the law enforcement torch run for the North Carolina Special Olympics. From Parks and Recreation, Kelly Maraccio. And from the law enforcement torch run for the North Carolina Special Olympics, Doc Colback and Leslie Moyer, they're here. Uh, running with the Law was a five-kilometer race held on August 3rd as a new component of National Night Out activities. This first-time event was coordinated by members of the JPD Traffic Division and Recreation and Parks to benefit North Carolina Special Olympics. Over 100 runners come out to participate in this, in this race, and we plan to continue it as an annual event in the future, with, along with National Night Out. Uh, and we're going to present the Special Olympics. Uh, Captain Driggers here has a, a, a very healthy little check right here for the uh, $2,424 to go to the North Carolina Special Olympics. <laughs> and this, this represents the money that was raised during, uh, during this particular torch run or for this year. And... Uh, Again, the police department is very involved in the activities of Special Olympics and, and a very strong promoter. And I uh, appreciate what y'all do in this community. We have a very, very strong Special Olympics program here, and I hope this is something that continues to grow and uh, the city can be uh, a partner in. And uh, $2,424, I don't know what you're going to do with it, but it sounds like a good start at something anyway. But thank you very much.
Cora's been after me for a long time to do that. I might surprise her one of these days. So, uh, for the next presentation, I'd like to ask Chief Unero and Chief Spencer Lee from the Fire Department if you'd come up and join me. Tonight, we're going to recognize some uh, Fire Department personnel for uh, some acts that they've done uh, in two separate incidents that uh, go above and beyond. Uh, the first incident, October 26, 2012, on Richlands Highway. It was uh, fire personnel were dispatched to a motor vehicle accident where there was a major damage and the occupants were trapped. One victim was a five-year-old child. In addition to stabilizing the vehicle and extricating the occupants, fire personnel assisted the paramedics. The work involved in this extrication was extremely challenging because of the major damage to the front of the vehicle and crash debris blocking the path to the victim. And I would like to call up several firefighters now when you hear your name. I know some of, the, some of them are not present tonight, but I'm going to call their name anyway uh, to, to at least recognize this, what they did. Captain William Lee, he's not here tonight. Captain Jeff Williams. Driver operator Jeremy Foster. Driver operator Tim O'Toole is not here tonight. Firefighter Don Henderson is not here tonight. Firefighter Victor Salazar. <clears throat> Firefighter James Reardon. And Firefighter Michael Williams. And these gentlemen are receiving an extrication rescue award. Thank you very much. <laughs> also, I'd like to ask driver operator Tom Shiver. Tom? And Tom's receiving a letter of commendation for his actions in this, in this same incident. Thanks, Tom. Let's get a picture here. On December 5, 2012, fire department personnel were dispatched to the 1700 block of Hargett Street where a bicyclist had been struck and was trapped underneath a vehicle. Upon arrival at the crash scene, firefighters realized the bicyclist had suffered grave injuries. The crew quickly stabilized the vehicle and deployed airbags to raise it off the victim. They were successful in extricating the victim from a very dangerous situation, allowing transport by EMS. At this time, I would like to ask uh, the following uh, firefighters to come forward for to be designated with the extrication rescue award. Chief Spencer Lee, who's already here. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Ross Whitmore. Driver operator Lyndon Sutherland. Driver operator Benjamin Frank. Firefighter Mike Barone. And Firefighter Joshua Booth was unable to be with us tonight. But again, let's give these guys a round of applause for their heroism. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Oh, Chief, 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 might as well come on back up here. I'm not done yet. Next, with a lot of great pleasure to be able to swear in a, a, a new assistant fire marshal. And I'd like to ask Sean Hayes and his wife, Patricia, if they would join me up front, please. And I'm going to give that to one of y'all. I'm going to let you hold that, okay? Left hand, raise your right hand. Oh, okay. If you would repeat after me, I state your name. I, Sean Hayes, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will be alert and vigilant. I will be alert and vigilant. In performing my duties. In performing my duties. As assistant fire marshal. As assistant fire marshal. That I will not be influenced. That I will not be influenced. In any matter. In any matter. On account of personal bias or prejudice. On account of personal bias or prejudice. That I will support and maintain. That I will support and maintain. The Constitution and laws of the United States. The Constitution and laws of the United States. And the Constitution and laws of North Carolina. And the Constitution and laws of North Carolina. Not inconsistent therewith. Not inconsistent therewith. And that I will faithfully and impartially. And that I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge and execute. Discharge and execute. The duties of my office. The duties of my office. As assistant, fire marshal, as assistant fire marshal of the city of Jacksonville Fire Department, of the city of Jacksonville fire Department according, to the best of my skills, according to the best of my skills, abilities, abilities and, judgment. and judgment. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Now's your chance to pay back. <laughs> it's sharp. Do we have any paramedics here? <laughs> okay. And let me read a little something here about you. How's that? Sean began his career with the City of Jacksonville Fire Department in 2005. He is a native of Onslow County. He graduated from Dixon High School in 2004 and is a 2011 graduate of UNC Wilmington. Sean is currently studying for a Master's in Public Administration at UNC Pembroke and he will be assuming the, the, the role as an assistant fire marshal with the City of Jacksonville Fire Department. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, I'm going to take a real quick uh, break here. I know a lot of you came for the uh, presentations and all and probably don't want to stay for the rest of the meeting, but this would be a, a great time to make a break for the door if you want to. Uh, you're welcome to stay. I don't mean for you to run off, but...
All right, Council, that brings us to uh, agenda item number one. This is a public hearing zoning text amendment. At this time, I'll reconvene the public hearing in this matter. And I, is there anyone present that wishes to speak at, at this public hearing on this matter? Seeing no one, I'm going to close the public hearing at this time and reconvene the regular council meeting. And, uh, council, we're being asked to uh, approve the zoning text amendment in attachment A, except for the changes to Part L2, which was pertaining to the heights of the light poles. I think we had some uh, concerns about that. And Jer uh, Jeremy Smith is here to present. Did you have anything to add, okay, Jeremy? Sir, that's, I was just going to say the staff has changed our recommendation to accept the amendment except for part L2, which pertains to the light pole heights and have staff come back to you at a future workshop to discuss uh, uh, mm -hmm. light pole heights and how we uh, would regulate them. Okay. Thank you. Any questions of Mr. Smith? All right. Does the council want to take action on this? Mayor Phillips, I move that we approve the zoning text amendment and attachment A, except for the changes to part L2, pertaining to light pole heights and to direct staff to schedule discussion on light pole heights at the upcoming council workshop. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, thank you very much, Jeremy. That brings us to our first section of public comment for this evening. I have one person signed up, Mr. Randy Gorham. If you would please give your address, name and address for the clerk. No, you can say it, you can say it from there. You just your name and address oh, for the, for the uh, record. Randy Lee Gorham, 246 of Panapine Road. Thank you. Well, he'll still talk about Judge Hardison, which I asked to speak to you, Mayor Phillips. I can't never talk to you in the office, so I guess I had to come here to talk to you about the problem still going between me and Judge Hardison. I was threatened by Judge Hardison in the courthouse it was in, within the, the city limits. I got off my face, spit down my face, and nobody would do nothing about it. So they told me to the police department jurisdiction, so I went to the police department once again to make another report on it, but nobody would do nothing about it. So I'm uh, asking you again, what should I do? Um, awesome word. But anyway, um, a threat is a threat, no matter who you are. Just call you the judge. It still need to be investigated. But y'all can never prove to me that you investigate the situation. I can't get no paperwork on it. So I still want my information, sir. If you don't mind me asking, how, how long ago was this? This is going on now since me and George been having a problem since 2001. He cussed me out in the courthouse, spit got on my face, he stopped court, proceeded in the hallway again in my face and cussed him out. Um, it don't have nothing to do with the courthouse. I never threatened the man, but he kicked it in my face. I'm not gay. He only kicked it in my face so close and kissed me. Spit on my face. You know what I'm saying? How are y'all let someone get in y'all face and cuss y'all out and spit it in the face? So you got daughters, Mayor Phillips. I'm how you like somebody to do your daughter like that. Mm -hmm. I have a father. I had a father. He died knowing that I was being threatened by a judge and I ain't done nothing wrong. And the police department do nothing about it. Okay. And I want to know what can be done about it at this moment, about the judge. And um, I went to a Raleigh Wednesday. He passed me three times on between four to five mile radius going to Raleigh. And uh, who did? It's Paul Hardison. Oh, okay. I don't know what's up. Every time I the raining, I said to my girl, there was Judge Hardison right there. He passed me, got out of sight, and I kept going proceeding. And uh then I while he came up and me again. And he passed me for the second time. So along and facing the exit, he passed me for the third time. And um I'm saying I don't know what's up, you know what I'm saying? I have a life, I live too, you know what I'm saying I'm gonna defend myself at all costs, whatever it takes. He followed me around, whatever. He needs to stop. But the police department ain't going to do nothing about it. So uh, Raleigh told me to come back and express it to the city council meeting again. So I'm coming back again. Mm -hmm. And as now, I still need to talk to someone in the police department about who, it. Who in Raleigh did you talk to? I talked to the judicial standard. They said I need to come back to the mayor. And it will be you. Mm -hmm. I asked to speak to you since the host has been going on several times. I never spoke to you. No one here. Mm -hmm. I'm saying if you broke the law, you broke the law no matter who you are. Because I'm still wearing my vest here. I still got that on. I'm still wearing my vest here, as you can see. Uh-huh. 
I'm going to keep wearing it. I'm saying, no matter if you call you a judge, you're not above the law. You know what I'm saying, how would you feel that your family was like that? Sure. Well, thank you for coming tonight. All right. Anyone else? Please, by all means, step step up there. Yeah. Um, why don't you uh, speak with the, Mr. Dr. Woodruff, and we'll arrange some time where we can do that. Okay. okay. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. The thing was blocking you out. Did you want to speak? Come, please come to the uh, podium. If you would, please, would you state your name and address for the record? Hi, my name is Latoya Scott. My address is 6246 Mississippi Street. Um, I'm owner operator of Final Touch Models. I'm not exactly sure if this is where I should go, but um, I uh, recently moved back here due to military. And I really love this city, and I am one of the coordinators of Philadelphia Fashion Week and Atlantic City Fashion Week, as well as Connecticut Fashion Week and Latin, Latina Fashion Week in New York. And I wanted to bring a Fashion Week to Jacksonville. And I um, started working on it already, but I wanted to get approval from the city because already I have a very strong VIP list and what that would bring um, some huge crowds to the city, so I wasn't sure who okay. to well, talk to about I'm gonna get, uh, Dr. Woodard, the city manager, is going to give you a card, yeah. and he's going to put you in touch with the right people to talk to here. Okay. Okay? All right. Will, will that help you? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you coming. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Let's move... Uh, we need to move on here. Um, wow, run out of room. Okay. I guess that brings us to our reports. And uh, I'll start with you, Mr. Warden. Just wanted to, again, say thank you to the voters, but uh, thank you to the city staff uh, for a very nice reception tonight. Thank you for, if you would thank your folks for us. Thank you. It was very nice of them. So, thank you. Mr. Thomas. Uh, yes, Mary Phillips. I have, uh, I have some good news and some bad news. The, uh, as winter approaches, I guess the bad news is that the, the farmer's market is over for this year. Um, but the good news is for the next two Saturdays in the same location, they're having the holiday market, which is obviously devoid of the fresh fruit and vegetables, but there's a lot of uh, craft items. There's still honey some frozen goods, and it's, uh, it's still a worthwhile trip. There's a lot of activity out there, a lot of local items that we can enjoy. Again, that's Saturday, the Farmer's Market, 8.30 to 1.30 for the next two Saturdays. Tell them where that's at. It's Highway 258 behind the Onslow County Multi Center, Senior Center, a lot of people know it as. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Washington. Um, yes, I have a report from the Environmental and Appearance Advisory Group. Our last meeting for this year is going to be this Thursday, December 5th, beginning at 6 p.m. in um, classrooms A and B. However, starting with the new year of 2014, we are going to revise our meeting schedule. Um, the group will be now meeting on a bi-monthly meeting scheduled to begin in January 2014, which calls for a full committee to meet every other month with the subcommittees meeting during the off month. So beginning January 2014, we will have our first subcommittee meeting with our full committee meeting meeting the following February. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Willingham. Mr. Bidner. Yes, as I begin this term as a council person, you can help me go home this evening to create harmony in a household because I've been told that I forgot to thank my wife, my number one supporter, 
during this campaign. So, dear, I'm coming home and I thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing is, um, Mr. Manager, who's your liaison to the Sturgeon City? You, you or Mr. Hargett, or does it matter? It really doesn't matter. Normally, it's Mr. Hargett. But. Okay. I've had trouble trying to get him out here, but as you know, we just finished campaigning, and I've had many supporters who contributed to the expense of the campaign. We had some dollars left over, and I was thinking back to the candidates' forum when all the council expressed their support of Sturgeon City. So here he is. <laughs> so we have closed out my campaign account, and I want to present this check for a couple hundred dollars for Sturgeon City on behalf of the bidders. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that was very, very nice, very nice of you to do that. It wasn't too smart of you to forget no. about your wife. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Mayor Pro Tem Lazar. Thank you, Mayor. I was kicking him under the table, but he wasn't going <laughs> so I left him on his own. Uh, very quickly, I'd just like to give a quick report on the Tourism uh, Development uh, Authority and our work uh, continues with North Star Community Branding. Um, the branding effort is advancing on the strap line or community moniker that will be a major part of the marketing of the Jacksonville as a, uh, of Jacksonville as a destination. Um, we are in the process of, of getting some final layouts and we'll present that when we, when we do finalize that, that work. Um, several events funded from the TDA have reported their impact, and the first one was the uh, Grand Prix Series. Uh, the Grand Prix Series, while the effort was uh, more significantly felt, uh, will be felt next year, the full run of advanced publicity occurs. The economic impact of the half marathon was an estimated $130,460. Runners sign up for the events nearly a year in advance, so this was our first event, and we expect that to probably double next year, and it was a wonderful event. And more importantly, uh, at our TDA, we require an after-action report, and uh, they really did a, a wonderful job providing us a complete evaluation of their, uh, of their uh, series and they are to be commended for it. So a great job on their part, and we look forward to continuing to support them. Uh, this weekend is the last uh, event of the year, which is the Winterfest, and we encourage everyone to please come. It's a great time. It's our second year, and I think we're doing, uh, Mayor, you're doing the tree lighting right. at that event, so please come if you're able to. We also had our Jazz in the City. That was held um, uh, last month, and the organizer already organizers are already plotting to improve the event. That was the second year. This this was the second year, and again they they also provided an after action report, and that will continue to grow. We're very excited about that. Next meeting is set for January 30th at 1:30 p.m. We encourage anyone that would like to attend to please come. And as always, it, it's also aired on G10, and we will begin our work for the uh, FY15 budget. Um, the um, Transportation Committee, our, uh, our uh, report uh, will consist of, of a future meeting coming up as our program of work begins with the new formula, and we begin our prioritization process, and we'll bring that forward as we start to develop that. Uh, so we have a lot of work to do. Our coalition meeting will be meeting, uh, in hopefully in January. Uh, now that, uh, as we say, the dust has settled a little bit with a lot of the changes that have gone on at the state level and the personnel changes as well, and I will keep you up to date as that progresses. And that's the end of my report. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Woodruff. Mayor, hey, members of council, thank you very much. Uh, as Mr. Lazaro said, this coming Saturday is the Winterfest. It begins at 2 o'clock and runs until 8 p.m. Uh, we're going to have uh, a little warmer weather. Uh, it's projected to be in the low 60s, so at least it won't be in the 30s or 40s. Uh, the mayor will be lighting the official city Christmas tree about 6 p.m., and we're also having the flotilla, so it's a great night. We hope everybody will come down to the Riverwalk uh, area downtown. We'd also like to mention 
that uh, this will be the only council meeting for the month of December. So you will gather again at the first council meeting in January. Uh, yesterday, Ron Massey and I had the privilege of attending a meeting in Wilmington where Secretary Decker held another listening session where she was interested in input on how we continue to improve the economic forecast for this region. Uh, Ron and I had the opportunity to talk with her privately. We've given her some very good ideas. Sheila Pierce and Senator Brown were part of the panel and we talked with them. Uh, they have some exciting things. At the end of the day, though, uh, they, they recognize their role is statewide and we need to make sure that as a city and as a group of elected officials, we stay closely engaged to make sure that the area east of 95 is not overshadowed. One of the things we're trying to stress is the creation of a military triangle that would include obviously Bragg, even though it's not quite east of 95, but uh, Bragg and Lejeune and uh, the Air Force bases, all of the various military. We are gonna have uh, an, an opportunity uh, for some changes in the garbage collection schedule. I know that Christmas is still several weeks away. You're probably like I am. You're finished with your shopping. Mr. Bittner, I know you've got to go shopping tonight before you get home. <laughs> but the, the Christmas garbage uh, schedule, we would encourage you to watch the uh, website for the city. I don't expect you to remember this, but City Hall will be closed the 25th and 26th. What that means is that on Monday, you will get regular garbage collection. On Tuesday, the 24th, you'll get regular collection. On Wednesday and Thursday, there will be no collection, but on Friday, both the Thursday and Friday routes will be run. And then, of course, we have another holiday the following week, and that's New Year's. City Hall will only be closed on Wednesday, that's New Year's, and the regular schedule will be Monday, Tuesday, when, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, so that will be a regular schedule. One difference though, everything will be picked up that same day. So don't expect your, your horticultural to be picked up on Wednesday as normal. You will have horticultural, recycling, and garbage all picked up the same day, the week that is New Year's. If I'm not mistaken, and I don't have a note on this, but I just thought, I believe the North Carolina Symphony is coming to town this week, isn't it? Does anybody have an update on that? I don't know the date, but they are coming. Okay, so we would encourage people to turn out. Uh, does anybody know where they'll actually be? Usually north side. North side. At north side. Okay. For some reason, I want to say that is uh, the end of this week, but we encourage people to look at the paper or wherever the advertisements may be. Uh, lastly, Mayor, we would like to take just a moment. Uh, Glenn and his staff have put together almost a year in review. It's pretty amazing what you have accomplished as the leaders of this community. Uh, we would like to thank you for the continued leadership. We're excited about the year ahead. And Glenn, if you're ready, would you please uh, roll the segment that shows a year in review?
The Mayor and Council, I think you'll agree with me, Jacksonville is indeed a wonderful place in which to live, work, and play. We wish each of you a very happy holiday and Merry Christmas. Uh, Ms. Washington, happy birthday tonight. And as always, Mayor and Council, thank you for your leadership and what you do for this community. Thank you. Thank you. With that, uh, Mr. Carter. Thank you. <laughs> um, I believe that we're going to do something out here in the lobby after we adjourn. So uh, I would entertain a motion to adjourn at this time. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? All right. Aye.